Welcome, welcome, welcome! We've lost the die roll. We're in a slow play today. Um, I had some other videos planned, but they uh, didn't go to plan, should we say. I got my ass kicked across multiple formats a little bit today. So, I'm on trusty old death and taxes in modern today. We're playing red white d and I'm going to keep this hand. We've got double eighth of vile Thalia, giver of runes, path to exile, and a ghost quarter. If you're wondering what the deck list looks like, it's in the description below. We're playing red primarily to play Magus of the Moon. We appear to be against humans, which makes Magus very, very good if we get it down early. And well, hello there. We're going to go snow covered plains. Aether Vile past the turn. We're only playing Snow Covered Planes because, well, I think that's what my deck list defaulted to on Man Magic the Gathering uh, Gold MTG Goldfish, should I say? Magic the Gathering Goldfish. Oh my goodness, it slivers. What are the chances of that? Unsettled Marinina. Okay. We want to draw a red source or we want to get some of this out before they can play too many slivers. Let's go ahead and play Ghost Quarter and play a Thalia Guardian Freeman. Our path's going to be good, but it's going to cost us an extra two uh, because Thalia will tax it and then instead of it, it will get countered if we don't pay through the Unsettled Mariner. Mutavolt from our opponent, which is also a Sliver. Sinew Sliver, so that's a 3-3 three, three attacker now that we can't block very easily. And a Sidewinder Sliver, so things got flanking. So if we block our creature dies, cool. Sounds good, sounds good, sounds good. The attack with a 3-3. Three, three. We're going to Vial in our Giver of Runes. At no point can we really block right now because of the flanking sliver, so we probably have to kill that flanking sliver. Now, it's important to note that this is spell or ability. That includes Flicker with Flicker, which is pretty funny. No attacks from us. We're going to pass back to our opponent. If we... We can pay for Path to Exile for 3 mana to exile a Sidewinder sliver, for example, and get to block a 2-2 with our Sinew sliver. It all depends upon what they cast now. If it's another Lord, then we might be in trouble. It is indeed another lore. Duh. Lord. I didn't think flanking would fuck me up today, but here we are. For the attack, we're going to path to exile this one. They find a basic land here, making our Magus a bit worse. We're going to go to blocks. Block the 4-4, four, four, say okay. Give it protection from blue. No, from white. We take three. Our Aether of Altics up. We drew another land, which is good. I play Megs the Moon to avoid them playing any more slivers, essentially. And we're going to do some padding blocking here by basically blocking the 4-4. Next turn, we can use the Flicker Waste to flicker out a Lord and get some good block. For those of you who don't know, Megs the Moon is basically Blood Moon on a body. It's a 2-2 Blood Moon, essentially. We're going to take 6 here. Going to 8. We play another Mountain and pass the turn back to us. We're going to take our first Vial up, but not the second one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A second Wisp is pretty good. We get in for four. We play the first Wisp. Remember, every Wisp trigger targeting their things will cost us one mana. So we're just going to reset our Thalia for a first strike and block it here. We go to their turn. They attack. We get a blocks. We're going to put this one in front of this one. This one in front of this one. We're going to say okay. We're then going to activate Aether Vile. Say yes. Put Wisp in. Trigger. Target this Lord. Pay one, say yes. Okay, that goes out. This is now 2 2 for first strike damage, is a 3 3. And then finally, we give this flicker with protection from white. We take their damage, we're off their board. They get a 2 2 back at the end of the turn. We untap. We tick up the triggers on our new age vial and do not tick them up on the old age vial. We drew a Stoneforge Mystic. Interesting. We put a, flick, uh, a Stoneforge Mystic into play. Go and grab a Sword of Fire. No, we'll, go, we'll grab a Battle Skull. We'll grab a Battle Skull. We're going to go to Combat and Attack for th six in the air. And they decide that they've seen enough for game one. We throw a bunch of Arbiters and Thalias. Even though the first trick's good, but the other bits aren't. And then we bring in Battle Skull. Oh, sorry. We already have Battle Skull deck. We bring in Lightning Bolt, Kitchen Finks, Avon, Whiff Watcher, a Selfless Spirit, Megas the Moat, and Gideon, Ally of Zendikar. Our plan is to have as much removal as possible and bodies that will allow us to make profitable trades like Selfless Spirit and Kitchen Finks. And, uh, yeah, gain a little bit of life, stop them from attacking, and then smack the fucking shit out of them. Our opening hand has the Magus of the Moon, Aether Vile, Giver of Runes, a removal spell we cannot cast, and Restoration Angel. Now, we do have eight uh, red producing lands in our deck, nine including the Mountain, actually, and Field of Rune will get us one. Magus of the Moon will also turn our non-basics into Mountains, so if we get to three mana play this, this will become Mountain, this can use this. So, this hand is perfectly capable. Opponent's mulliganed to six. Plays a Sliver Hive. 
Plays a vial. There we go. We we're expecting vials out of them. Second Magus. Not so good now there's a vial over there. Our opponent plays F Frenzy Sliver. Jeez. When a sliver attacks, it isn't blocked. It gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. We want to draw a two drop here. Hopefully. We have cut the majority of them for other cards. So it's not likely. We did not draw it. Okay. That is fine. This Frenzy Sliver is going to attack as a two one. I really like the art for this Frenzy Sliver. It looks literally brutal. Sinew Sliver. Sure. We're going to take three here. Boy, oh boy. At least Mingus the Moon will shut off these Muta Vaults at the very least. We're going to draw a land here. And we did. So that's good. We cast Thalia, Heretic, Cathar. This will slow down their progress of their board state. It will mess with their mana. It will mess with their blockers. I mean, there's an argument that we could have Field of Wound one of their Muta Vaults to kill one of the uh, creatures that they had to then be able to bolt something else. But that's probably our plan next turn, potentially. Although, Mix Loving will just turn off the Muta Vaults anyway and turn on the bolt, so I think we'll just stick. The act of Aether Vial. What's it going to be? A Mariner. Making our bolt a little bit worse. A little bit worse. The great thing is that Thalia Heretic Cathar is a first striker, so their blocks are going to be kind of clunky next game. Although, that said, if they play another land and activate both Mutables, they're swinging for a hell of a lot of damage. They do not tick up their Aether Vile, keeping it on two, suggesting they have a Lord in hand. They have two cards in hand, both unknown at present. They animate Mutavolt. They go to combat and they swing. If they make a Lord, well, we've got Giver of Runes, so we might as well just try and kill this unmet settled mariner thing we attempt to give our thalia protection from white or blue here it does open us up to removal if they have for example dismember in hand that might be why they kept that mana up they do have dismember in hand okay we lose big thalia here they take four from that but we also take four from the attack so it's not great we tick up our eighth of our we drew a sacred foundry so we have a fourth land it's a question of whether or not we want to keep Restoration Angel up or play a second Magus and have Bolt. We activate Aether Vile and they activate their Aether Vile in response. They get an unsettled Mariner. Okay. We're going to put Magus and the Moon into play. We're going to play a Mountain. Bolt now costs us three mana. Which isn't great. I think I'm just going to keep Restoration Angel up and go for a triple block next turn. Uh, using Restoration Angel to save our Giver of Runes. No, that won't work, because we'll have to designate blocks before that. I guess we could throw the Giver of the Runes under bus to save the Magus. So we're going to block with Giver and give the Magus protection from whatever colour it needs to have protection from. They now have First Strike. Jesus wept. Okay. Most of the is going to flick at the Magus to the moon. Then we're going to go to blocks. And we're going to block here. Here. A frenzy trick on the stack. Well, then we're going to give our Magus protection from white. We lose our giver. We kill two of their creatures. We go to ten. We do not tick up our Aether Vial. We draw another Aether Vial, which is less than ideal. I'm going to keep up my Bolt, keep my Magus in my Pokeball, and pass the turn back to them to play on their turn. We need to threaten them, but they are playing empty-handed. They've got nothing in hand barring the card they draw each turn. And their Vial is stuck on two as well, so I'm not... I'm not feeling too pressured by the activate the vial. Probably make a lord, I would assume. Just another mariner. Okay. No attacks. End of turn, we're gonna activate Aether Vile. Draw a Sunbaked Canyon, which doesn't do a whole lot whilst we've got Megas and the Moon in play. And then we're gonna pass back to our opponent, I guess. Or do we just start swinging now? I think we do three in the air here. This will prompt them to try and attack us, I'm sure. On the upside, our Magus the Moon can trade off with one of their Mariners. The other one can block a 1-1. One, one, and we can bolt the first striking sliver to make sure that our Magus trades off with one of their creatures. They have one card in hand, Violon 2. We have two cards in hand, Violon 3. Only one of the cards in our hand is actually any good. Frenzy goes on the stack. And I'm going to bolt this striking sliver. This way, if we can whisper our Magus, if we draw a Wisp, we can actually crack our Sunbaked Canyon for value. Look at this bloody stack. Multiple triggers from Unsettled Mariners. Some of them are Frenzy triggers. So we're going to take three here, but kill the 2-2. Two, two. We're a Stoneforge Mystic, which is not terrible. 
I'm going to get light and shadow because then we can just start churning things out of our graveyard. No attacks from us because they could have a creature in the Pokeball, meaning that we could be facing down three attackers next turn, and we are quite low. Light and Shadow, it gives us protection from white, which is one of the major colours. It gives us protection from black, which appears to be their removal, and dismember. It gives us protection from black, which is Frenzy Sliver. And it also gives us uh, life gain and the ability to get creatures back from the graveyard, like Thalia, Giver of Runes, and so on. Their attacks don't look too good here, unless they draw a Lord of some kind. Uh, they take their vibe of three with four drawings, so I guess they're hoping to draw Harmonic Sliver, I think. Uh, my stranger was now a 5 6 flying pro white pro black creature. We get in. We're going to get back Thalia. Thalia goes back to hand. We play an Aether Vial. And we pass back to them. When they finally go to activate the Vial player creature, we'll just flash in Thalia off of our Vial. Nope, they've seen enough. Got him. Winning the die roll makes me wet. Hmm. Sure, whatever. This hand isn't great. There's no vile. Uh, the Arbiter doesn't do a whole lot. But we can lead Stoneforge into Arbiter. Or we can just slam Arbiter if we think it's going to be impactful. If they're a fetch heavy deck. Or they're playing something like Gift Storm. Or Am Am Does Amulet care about fetching early on? Not necessarily. But there's a fetch line from our opponent. Swamp from our opponent. Inquisition from our opponent. I assume they take the Stoneforge Mystic, although Arbiter might be a pain for them if they don't have any removal spells after this turn. They took Stoneforge Mystic, which basically removes our choice of what to do and what to fetch. And So yeah, thanks for that, I guess. We draw a Ghost Quarter, which is pretty good to lead up with a Leonone and Arbiter. Now they spend their turn killing Arbiter, we can play an Arbiter again and then Ghost Quarter another land. Seems good. I'm quite a fan of strip mine. That also makes me rather horny. Yeah, baby! We drew another ghost quarter. Oh boy. It's fucking Christmas. We attack for two. They go to 15. And we play Leon and Arbiter. What's their plan here? Are they going to cast a cantrip of some kind of the end step? They're gonna just snap it loose. You wasteland you? Okay, cool. You can tarp it, fine. Play a Sunbait Canyon. We play a Thalia. You wasteland them again. And then, you know what? I'm going to go to combat. I'll happily trade an Arbiter for a Snappy at this point. Sure. They go to 13. They play a Fetch Land they can't crack. Oh, fuck it hell. That's good. Oh. Oh, baby, a triple! Can you, can you hear it? It's the sound of my genitals, like, humming. Like a fucking low-frequency radio with just general arousia. Arousia? That's a that's a mix of the word erasure and arousal. It's um when you're so aroused your dick just disappears. Sometimes you just have it all, I guess, and, and it feels good. Sometimes you don't have it all and magic shits in your mouth and you have to like be like, mmm, th thanks. Thanks, wizards. We're gonna keep this. We've got Stoneforge Mystic, Leon Arbiter. We've also got a rest in peace to like get their uh, snapcasters and go back to the worst. I assume like some sort of bug made range or control or some shit. Players they could have already tapped. There was a time where I thought, you know. This path to exile might be worth it, but then I thought, you know what, fuck it, we'll just play the foundry. Tapped and just throw chips and caution to the wind and let them do whatever the fuck they want. Position of Kozilek. Do they take the, the Arbiter, the Stoneforge, or the Rip? I guess it's going to be the Stoneforge. That's my assumption anyway. Yep. Cool. Then I guess if we lead up with Arbiter, they'll just kill it and crack their fetch lands and love life, but... I'm going to play it anyway, because if it doesn't die and it just disrupts them a whole bunch, then I'm pretty happy with that. They crack their fudge in response to the Arbiter, which makes a whole lot of sense. Do they have a push for my Arbiter in my end step? They did, they did shock themselves. Shocked. Land. Shocked Pikachu face. That's a fatal push. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. We play a rest in peace. This will turn off Snapcaster Mages and Gurmag Angus. Also make Drown the Lock really bad. So I guess if they have <laughs> trapped in the log, they should counter it. Oh, you. You and your drowns. Getting all up in my shit. Ovo Nature's Titan. Titan of Nature's something. I don't fucking know. So this is the mid-range, like, Pioneer deck, and someone's just playing it in modern with some fetch lands. Okay, I can dig it. Okay, let's play an Arbiter. They fetched in response, so they know what they're doing. They, they also shocked, so they might have a second push again, which is unfortunate for us. I really wanted them to cast the arrow so I could path it with Arbiter and be like, YOLO. Push number 
Dwa, du, du. They're going to play an Uro next turn, and I'm going to path it. And that'll give them like a land up out of hand and a land out of their library. I wanted them not to be able to search. I tried. But as you can see, Albert is a lot worse on the draw. Uh, enter the battlefield. I'm going to pop for the triggers resolve in case they draw a force of negation or play a land like an island and spell pierce me or some such fucking nonsense. My rib ended up being pretty good if I'd actually got it down. We drew a giver of runes. Which I'm going to play. And then we also got a, a, a waste that I'm just going to ping myself with a whole bunch to fucking play. I don't give a shit. Then we're going to like reset the snow covered planes to pretend we've got a path when we don't. Now I don't recall whether they actually saw our hand earlier this game with the Inquisition. They did but I can't recall if the Restoration Angel was in there because magic is really hard to keep track of. That's not what we wanted to see. But. Do you know what? I'd go as far as to say, I'm not just saying this, this is the one thing we did not want to happen this turn. Fucking Liliana last hope. Fuck. We drew a Thalia. We're gonna... We're gonna keep up a, a Restoration Angel to save our giver if they have any removal spells. Looks like they do. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you didn't say the magic words. God, that's painful. Fuck. Flick of the giver. On the downside, the giver can't give the Restoration Angel now protection from black during their turn. So if they ever crack the fetch land into a, into a push, we'd lose our Resto Angel. Yeah, we lost the Resto Angel anyway. Okay, sure. Eh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> this is not good. Okay, they're going to fail push our giver now. Turns out Rest in Peace would have been literally the best fucking card in the world against their deck. I mean, Badaskull is not the worst magic card in the world here. They are running out of resources too, so we can slam Badaskull here. Thorley doesn't do anything to Liliana. We've kind of got to hope that the cards in their hand can't deal with the germ cleanly. Um, obviously a trophy would kill Badaskull completely, so that's a super clean. A push would kill the germ but leave the Badaskull around, and then we're just two mana off playing Thalia and equipping the Badaskull. They had the third trophy, so it was the cleanest possible answer to Badaskull. So, uh, yeah, like, fucking eat my eat my shit and call me Charlie. That was fucking irritating. I'm particularly sweary today. I've had some very bad games of Magic earlier in the day. Um, but I'm loving this. I'm enjoying this. We drew a Field of Ruin, which doesn't really do anything. We draw a card off of uh, Sunbaked Canyon. We drew a Wisp. We draw a... Card off of Sunbaked Canyon again. Cool, 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 cool. Stoneforge Mystic. Let's go ahead and go get... Hmm. Fire and Ice? Nope, they got to Drown. We're going to skip it up. It's not worth my time and energy to try and fight Slog through this. There's a small chance we draw like gods and they draw badly at that point, but it's very, very low. We will go on the play. We will keep this hand with Magus of the Moon. Because their mana base seems like a fucking mess. Field of Ruin into Aether Vial. Then we can go Giver of Ruin, Stoneforge Magic, and Magus the Moon off of the Aether Vial. We can even Ghost Quarter ourselves on turn 3 if we really think their mana is bad if they're tapped out. Inquisition. Uh, take my Magus or take my Stoneforge. They took the Stoneforge, which is not what I want. I don't want either of those cards to go, to be honest. So I'm not sure if that feels like the correct line for my side of the, the board. They may well just have another card to deal with the Magus. If they just blew up my Aether Vial with a, an Assassin's Trophy, I guess we get a land out of it so it wouldn't be so bad, but our hand is hinging on we'll, they, we'll take away this option for them. They 100% take Magus here. Then what I kind of want to happen is they push my giver, I untap, draw Magus, go squat myself, get a mountain, and play Magus. That's what I want to happen. Um, will it happen? Probably not, but we can hope. Nope. It did not. Okay, well... Live and learn. Live... They trophy my vial. We are so fucked. And it's all my fault. I'm going to feel to ruin their green source in end step. To test the wars and how many basics they've got, you know? You got a spawn, but no green source there. They also missed a land drop, so I'm okay with that. We drew a path to exile. I'm going to get an end step. And we're going to... We're going to flicker out their watery grave this turn to try and slow them right down. 
They might have a push from our wisp here because oh, they did not. I think now in draws to my ghost quarter the swamp. They find another swamp, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna ghost quarter this swamp too. They float a black this time. I guess if they get an island now, they can go ahead and drown my wisp. But they didn't have a drown. They drew the forest though. They do have they do have basic forest in the deck, just the one. So if we draw. If we draw another Ghost Quarter or Field of Ruin, we can take them off green or bl double blue. We took them off double black anyway, so we have to worry about Liliana. We drew another eighth of our, which kind of fucking sucks, but there you go. I say sucks. I mean, guess it means that if we don't draw any more lands for the rest of the game, if we, we're still like, screwed out of it. They've drawn all the lands they need, of course. Uh, then we can just cast the creatures that we need off of our vials. We're also then not like dead to them, just like blowing up one of our vials as well. So there is that. Incoming Liliana. Okay. How do I beat this? <laughs> Fuck knows. I didn't bring in Gideon, which seems bad. But I mean, we've got like Stoneforge packages and stuff. There's a lot of things our deck can do if we if we get there. We drew Field of Ruin, but it's like a turn too late. So that fucking sucks. Like real bad. We're going to blow up that green, green black source. Take off double black and double green. They have got another island, so they're playing five basics. I thought we might be able to starve them of it, but it turns out we cannot. They play a fetch land with a tracker in play. I'm going to wait till they crack the fetch land. Till then. We're going to tick up our old school vial. We're not going to tick up the new age vial. We're going to draw a ghost quarter. I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> We're just trying to run them out of basics. Meanwhile, they're ticking up a Liliana. We're going to path the tracker here. Minimise the card advantage. They failed to get a basic off the path. They found a watery grave off of the fetch land. I guess I'm going to take them off greens. They can't play like another tracker or an uro. Going to do this in the draw step, obviously. So allow them to use it for the f clue. Should have done that. Should have done that in my turn. Because they don't have any more basics to fetch. So the idea of doing it in draw steps in case they draw it. Is done. They didn't float the mana for some reason. Okay, we took them off greens. They're just on blue black right now. So Assassin's Trophy, Uro, and of course Tyler's Track. If they have more copies of that in the deck, are all offline right now. They crack a clue. We really need a way to deal with this Liliana. Perhaps we should have brought Revoker in as it's quite a good way. It's not clean because it can be removed. I mean, our fires can fight through a Liliana emblem if they get greedy and go for it very early. A Rest Angel will be sick. I'm going to take up both my Vials here. I'm going to go one Vial to three and one Vial to four. Interesting. This takes them off black mana. Just leaves them with blue. <laughs> what a bizarre game. Well, it gives them red as well. But, uh... Okay, so they've only got blue out of their three colours left. They've got a Liliana that can shrink the front end of my Mountain Man. I'm going to say always no to these now. We drew a Thalia. Which we'll play, because if they kill it with a Liliana, we can then hit the Liliana down and so on. They'll, they might just ult the Liliana here, though. That means we need to desperately draw a flyer to be able to kill them. Yeah, okay. It's zombie time. We've locked them out of casting spells. We've got to beat the zombies. Please draw a Wisp. Please draw a Wisp. Batter skull. That's like the worst possible draw. Fucking hell. Okay, well, this might be game then. We need to draw a fly like a wisp or a resto right there, so we can apply pressure to them in the air and just block on the ground. Um, obviously, Thalia will like cut down the zombies for one turn. They might even wait. Yeah, they're waiting so they get more zombies. Stoneforge Mystic. To be able to get this battle score online. Wispy. Wispy, wispy, wispy. Is that going to be fast enough? I'm unsure. Okay, well, we can wisp out one zombo and start attacking in the air. That's six zombies. That's 12 damage right there. Also, we can't really treat the Magus the Moon in because it will give them Creeping Tar Pit back. No attacks. I'm okay with that, I think. You know, again, a lot of zombies there. This battle score will be pretty good at like attacking and blocking if we could play it. But we can't. I don't think we have any way to beat this now. And the deck is... Oh, da -bop, da -bop, da -bop, da -bop, da -bop. Okay. That's good. Is it enough, though? 
Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I guess we can block with Omegas. So we got lethal, we got lethal. We need to survive an attack. And there's 24 power on board, okay. I haven't done the maths. We have to start doing the maths, aren't we? <laughs> That's what we're gonna have to do, yes. Uh, Wisp comes back, flickers out a zombie. And if we block these two, nine times two is 18. So we go to blocks and we block. We'll take 18 and then kill them in the air. Down to two. What a ridiculous game of magic. What an absolutely ridiculous game of magic. Oh, look at all the zombies. Okay. Oh, what am I on about? This isn't seven. This is only six. Oh, I'm an idiot. I thought we could survive. We can't. We're so close. We're so close to beating the emblem and we can't do it. Fuck. Absolute fuck. Oh. So unbelievably close. I thought I was going to come as well. And now I've just got fucking lethal blue balls. We can do six in the air. Maybe they won't block. Is that where we're at? Well, it definitely is where we're at because the, uh, oh, fuck. I was thinking four and three because of the back end. In we go. In we go. Do you know what would be really good right now? Megas the fucking moat that I've left in the sideboard because I didn't think about Liliana emblems. Definitely beats the Liliana emblem. Oh, they're double blocking the Megas. They were, I mean, they've got to be careful of Terra Battle Rage, right? But that, <laughs> imagine if you Terra Battle Rage, would be so good. Destroy all, all blocking creatures for one white mana. Got ya. GG. So fucking close. Did I miss like an attack with the Giver of Ruins earlier? I did, didn't I? Because I didn't attack with it. Well, they're going to they're gonna need to remove us behind it anyway. So I don't think I got them. But um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed these couple of games. Uh, there will be more gameplay coming from me soon. Some more Mimi stuff next week as well. Um, uh, obviously, if you haven't seen it already, check out my video talking about Fetchland this week. Um, some stream videos as well. We'll have some more stuff going up uh, over the weekend and early next week as well. Uh, if you like the video, drop the like button. Uh, drop the like button. Drop a like oh, by hitting the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favourite part of the video was. And I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.